Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanam Narula, and I am a senior PM at Amazon. Uh, before Amazon, uh, I have worked in various startups as well as big companies. So I've seen both the environments of how uh, you work as a PM in a small startups, middle level startups, as well as big companies. So today I'm going to share some of my uh, learnings that I've had in past 10 years, uh, being, a, being an engineer first and then moving into product manager and learning through the product manager discipline. Okay, we'll get to it. Okay, so one of the theme um, that I have today is accelerating your PM career, right? So when I think about this theme, the, the topmost thing that comes to my mind is communication. Uh, as a PM, uh, communication is a really important uh, like factor or how good a PM you can be. And uh, when we talk about communication, uh, as you can see, I have a definition here for a reason. Uh, Mary Webster defines communication as a process by which information is exchanged uh, between individuals through a common system of symbol signs or behavior. Uh, normally, when we talk about communication, people think of like having good listening as a PM is very important or speaking is very important. But there are other ways to communicate that, that you communicate without even knowing uh, is like how you behave, how you show signs to your team. Uh, it says a lot about uh, any leader, but PM specifically, because they talk through the organization with various stakeholders. It's very important that how you're being perceived or how you're communicating through your actions. And also, like of course, writing is very important way of communicating uh, like your thoughts, uh, your vision. So like today, uh, the theme that I have is like communication would weave around uh, all the agenda that I have but in different forms and uh, we'll also talk about something uh, more than that so let me go to the next slide so today's agenda is uh like i uh, i have read a book which uh is like seven habits of highly effective people by stephen covey if you haven't read through it like i highly recommend that book that book talks about uh, a concept called circle of influence uh so as a pm like uh, a circle of influence is something uh that that uh, you definitely need to have bigger and bigger as your role grow. So how can you how can you start? Uh, first of all, I'll give you a little bit what what uh, the concept is. It is that uh, when when uh, you are in a group, uh, your influence might be limited to you, and you can slowly work through uh, your group to increase your influence. First, your inner circle, then you keep going outside and outside. And proactive people actually do this way rather than thinking like, oh, I cannot uh, impress like president of the state, so I should not do any anything. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, and agenda also revolves around that. Those circles, like you start uh, building trust with your team uh, and then uh, you go to your manager and then you go even outside your manager realm. Um, so we'll talk through those things. Let's go to the first one. So building trust with the team, which is your core inner circle is very, very important. When, whenever you join a new company, uh, this is the first people that you are interacting with regularly. So uh, you definitely need to uh, like listen, identify the needs of your team members. And when I'm talking team here, it's not just the development team or, or your uh, like testing team or your design team, but like all the other stakeholders as well are part of your team, like legal customer service. So uh, I would expect you to like listen, identify the need of all these team members uh, and understand what motivates them. Uh, what is it like uh, that their, their purpose is driven off? Uh, how, how do they get excited about the work and what are they expecting from you? Uh, so listening uh, is very important, not only at the start, of your new job or new role, but like all through uh, the career. Um, second piece is empathizing with your team members. Uh, so we have heard a lot about empathizing with your user, uh, but I highly recommend uh, like building empathy for your team members as well. Like if, if uh, you're thinking about development team, like uh, like how how do they feel about the project that you are proposing or things that uh, you you are proposing? Uh, think about how how it helps them and what are their concerns uh it is important because uh like pm is a role which is like widespread and 
you can do your job in a great way when you have this agreement or alignment between all of these stakeholders and it is very important to understand their point of view uh, before jumping uh, on any like any of the conclusions um, second thing is uh, communicating why regularly so uh, i think alignment as i said is a very important part of uh, pm's role um, and how do you make people align like you can see already here in this picture like there are more than 10 and like i haven't had all the all the uh, all the stakeholders that a PM can have. Uh, so how do you align so many people? Um, so it is very important to tell the story as the saying goes like facts tell, stories sell. Uh, if you can tell a really nice and crisp story around your feature, around your product, like which you're proposing uh, or project that you're proposing, people would understand like the way our mind works is like it understands stories uh, rather than numbers yes number makes sense but like in order to truly drive uh, like you need the story to tell why this problem actually solution to this problem would solve a crucial customer problem uh, why is this needed uh, is definitely like uh, you need to tell that in your story and uh, how you can do that is like uh, by by communicating your story through writing like if, if it's like it depends like if, if it's a three-year document uh you want to uh tell your strategy like try writing it down putting it on paper and and circulating it among your stakeholders and asking for feedback what do they think about this uh like it, it helps in clarifying to people what you are thinking uh also like try to uh write these kind of context and uh like give this context even in smaller tickets like jira if you're creating anything for bi like i want this data try to give them more context as to why do you need this data uh giving that context help building the rapport that they are not doing some work which is random uh it, it has some meaning and it ties to something so like always always try to include a why uh and try to give context on the things that you ask for and then uh very important piece, right? Like uh, PMs, uh, like currency of uh, you say trust is like delivering products and create create an impactful products and features. Uh, it's not just uh, for PMs, but like your team, right? Like they are working with you day and night on these problems, and if they don't solve a real problem, like their uh, like hard work is also. Uh, gonna waste so like it's very important you deliver uh impactful product and features which 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 uh actually like makes a difference uh on the company's trajectory on the product trajectory or or in the user's perception of the company and it, one thing is about delivering these but there is another piece that you need to make sure that work of the team is visible outside like your team members as well like people uh, on other teams should know like that okay this product was delivered by this team and like uh, it performed really well or like uh, how how did it perform how did it impacted the company or the product uh, so it's it's not about you here it's about the the your actual team because this builds the ultimate trust if you are able to show the team that the work that they did actually impacted and uh, is communicated across the company next time you bring a project like this team would be excited because they know like that this person brings a pro brings projects which which have ultimate impact and then the this impact is also communicated across the company so i would highly recommend like make sure that the work of the team is visible to the company so this brings us to the second topic which is like uh, kind of our second circle uh, or like a second layer of the circle is your manager um and uh, once you have built good rapport with the team or actually these are parallel so they don't need to go one by one uh, but like second piece that you also need to take care of is like managing your manager um and uh, i have mentioned it here a myth that i had earlier in my career as like manager is responsible for my promotion uh, but that's not the case. Um, you and only you are responsible for your career trajectory. Manager can be your coach, mentor. He can help, like he or she can help. They are there to uh, support you or help you with whatever you need. But it is you who is responsible for that. So how do you go about it? 
uh, first thing is like in any performance evaluation, it's always about expectations versus reality. So it's your job to clarify uh, with your manager what is the expectation, uh, what is expected of the current role that you are in, uh, what success would mean in that role. Uh, try to have that clarity very, very early on in your, hopefully in your interviews, you would have that clarity, but like once you join, like have that dialogue, write it down uh, in, in a common documentation that you have with the manager that this is what is expected and this is how uh, I'm going to go about it. And uh, do not stop at that. The second piece is like, try to understand what your manager's goal is uh, and help them achieve it. Um, your manager, like, believe me, like, our PM managers are like three times more busier than the PMs. As a PM, I used to think like, oh, I'm doing all the work. My manager uh, is not doing the work. But like, uh, I have realized like managers are three times, maybe more busier than you. So like, if you help them achieve any of their goals, which are actually basically your goals rolling up to them, uh, you're helping them achieve it. But know like what is important to your manager and try to help them achieve those goals. Um, Another, I would say, like misconception that I have in my career is like, uh, as as the myth says, like manager is responsible for my promotion, but also like my manager would tell me like, oh, now you are ready for the next level, uh, and uh, like I I made that mistake early in my career, but it's it's again on you that you need to discuss this thing with your manager, like uh, once you are you feel like okay, this is my current role, I'm doing okay, uh, I'm, I've been hitting things now, like, let's talk about next level, and what skills do I need to build uh, to go to the next, le next level? And uh, and you don't need to wait for six months, 10 months, a year or two years before having this chat with your manager, like, uh, I'm not saying like they, uh, that you definitely need to start this, but uh, there are environments where I've seen like, you get promoted, uh, without having this talk, but what ha having this talk does is like shorten that time period rather than having that promotion in three years, you can have that promotion in two years if you start early and start clarifying these things. So have these talk chats with your manager like uh, as early as possible. Like, uh, as I said, like there is no timeline. You do not need to wait uh, probably four to six months once you have proven yourself and you you have things delivered uh, you can start having this chat and fourth piece here is like document your accomplishments uh, why i say that is like your manager is probably managing five more people directly and then uh, countless indirectly right like they they have been dealing with maybe executives and other people they do not have time uh, to remember everything that you did across the year uh, sometimes you you yourself would forget so have a continuous stream of accomplishment that you have been doing, Put it, doc, keep documenting it, because what it would do is like at the time of promotion, this would help you or and your manager to make a case because you have it all documented. It's, it's much easier to provide all the context, all the information when you have written down when it happened. So I highly recommend doing this. Okay. Another piece is like uh, your manager should know if you need anything. Uh, what I mean by that is like uh, early in my early years, like I thought like, oh, my manager knows like, okay, uh, um, uh, I'm doing these 10 things. So he knows how busy, how much busy I am and uh, uh, he would help when he has time uh, or if he thinks I need something. Uh, but this is a wrong way of thinking. Um, and uh, if possible, you should always tell your manager about your problems. Uh, why I shied away early in my career was like, I thought like maybe my manager would think like, I'm not up to my job. Uh, why am I having problems? I could solve it myself. And you can solve it yourself, but there are two reasons to discuss your problems. Like uh, when I'm talking about problems, it's like complex stakeholder or like product issues, uh, not like simple problems. Uh, the two benefits of sharing it with your manager or discussing it with your manager is you can basically brainstorm together uh, you go like they they are your manager they have uh, for for valid reasons right like so they have more uh, information on org level they have maybe more experience uh, they might have seen that problem before they can guide you or uh, mentor you into the right direction talk to uh, these things about with them second uh, 
important thing is like they would know uh, some of the challenges with your role. Uh, and at, at I've worked at places where PM managers already know like what are the challenges of the role, but like uh, there are places where you need to also clarify sometimes to your manager that these are difficult part of your product role because sometimes it comes with uh, distinct stakeholders as well. So do communicate your problems uh, with your manager. Um, second piece is communicate good news as well as bad news. So like it has often ha happened uh, that you would feel like it would often happen that you would feel like oh maybe I do not need to tell this bad news altogether now. Maybe I can wait. Uh, but it's always good to communicate bad news Sim in a similar fashion. You communicate good news with the same urgency. Uh, but like of course good. If, if you launch something, it did not work, uh, you should have some next steps of like how you're thinking it would work or some learnings from it. But do not shy away. Uh, if like if, if you're doing things right in your career, there would be like uh, instances where you would not get it right in the first time. You would iterate and then reach to the right level. You cannot always have like all the good news coming. So it's just part of the journey. Like the more I wouldn't say more mistakes you made, the more you would learn, but like, it's like, it always starts like that. It won't be hit at the start, <laughs> but you, you get to it. I'm sorry. And then, uh, use your one-on-ones very effectively. Uh, I've seen this tendency, like where, you know, one of -on one-on-ones, you would start talking about your work, your problems and discussing those things. But, uh, one-on-one -on -one is about you. Um, talk to your manager about, your career aspirations or what what you want to get out of the role or like what is the next thing you want to explore more uh, i can give you a personal story like where i use my one-on-ones always about like uh, like work things and did not talk about the thing that I was bothering me is like i wanted to move to a product role uh, which was more user focused uh, and i was doing really great at my role uh, i was loving the company people everything was great but I just wanted like a different role in my company, but I never had a chat with, had that chat with my manager and I end up like leaving the company. And when I put my papers, my manager told me like, uh, they, they wanted me to do that role without me asking, telling them the reason that why I'm leaving. And, uh, it left an imprint on me that things that you do not ask for, you would never get. So do ask for things. Uh, you never know what is in store for you. And, uh, one last piece on manager piece is like keep them informed by sending an end of work e peak email. Uh, so what this is basically what I do is at the end of the week, Friday, what I would do, I would write an email where to my manager, where I'm telling them, uh, that, uh, these are the things, uh, that I am working on or completed this week, uh, with the next steps. If they are uh, in progress, like what is my next step for this? And then these are the things that uh, I plan to work on next week. And these are the things that are blocked. So uh, this again, like uh, going back to my point, like your manager is informed now with the plethora of things that you are doing. Even if you start using your one-on-ones to discuss, you can't because as a PM, you are fighting like endless fires. Uh, and there are weeks where you won't be doing any product work at all. And you all you would be doing is fighting fires. So this helps keep your manager informed. Uh, about things that you're doing. And second benefit of this is like every Friday, I already know um, like what I need to do next week. Like I do not need to come on Monday and decide because I have this email, I CC myself as well. So I know like, okay, these are the things that I need to work on next week. I come in and I, I, I do those things. So it would not only increase your visibility, but also your um, effectiveness. Okay, this brings me to the third and final circle, which is like beyond your manager or like uh, your manager's peers. Like it's like your company, other stakeholders, your skip level. So when it comes to like, especially once you become, come to intermediate or senior level, your visibility needs to be more to go to that extra level. I know like this might be daunting at times, like that you need to convince like a million people uh, to get, promoted and go to the next level. But PM is a role which can take a company to 10x level. Uh, if, if you are going to go up level, like at a level where it is like director or like even, even senior PMs, uh, like or principal PMs, I would say, 
like you need to perform at that level uh, uh have that kind of visibility because in that role you would be impacting the trajectory of the company so that's why like you need to convince so many people uh but yeah like there is a way to do that which we're going to discuss now so how you can do it this thing is like various forms one is like have a regular one on one with your skip levels as well like by that i mean like not like weekly but like at least uh, there should be a monthly catch up on now uh, to understand what their priorities are how they are seeing uh, the work happening and uh, like other things as well about the product and market you can discuss their your ideas with your skip level as well so do not shy away from uh, meeting your skip level often like at least once a month or once a quarter at least if they are super busy uh, with their director level uh, like uh, but i would recommend as much as you can depending on your role um second piece is like uh, communicate wins your all we have already mentioned that we need to do this but like what you can also do is like at depending on your org again like if it's a smaller company or what works for you like send the end of quarter or year email to show the total impact that your team had again like it's not it of course it is for your visibility as well but like it is it also gives your team more visibility uh, which would help you again like uh, in different ways which we're going to discuss on next slide is like uh, this influence actually does not come directly with you talking to people but also like all these team members that we had a chat like we we saw at the start like they also tell their manager how how do you work uh, how is it working with you so like think about those perspective as well uh, when when you are planning for your career next levels um, the next thing um, that we can we will chat about is like so how do you go about building your brand with these team members right like you're working with so um if you are early in your early phases of your career actually these things also apply to the senior level but like you wouldn't get enough time but if you are early in your career pm career make sure uh, that you you know basic sequels by basic i mean like you can do at least two joins uh, in a sequel and handle data visualization tool yourself uh, this gives a lot of credibility to you uh, especially when you join a company you you are you need to ask a million question from data and you cannot go to bi for every question uh, even at senior level like uh, you should be able to handle of course like uh, as you get senior you do not have enough time to keep writing sequel but i still recommend highly recommend that you should be able to pull data uh, at least simple queries yourself and handle data visualization that, that this builds a big like this has helped me a lot i come from engineering background so i knew sql but like uh, i was amazed how much uh, visibility you get just by learning sql um as, especially in um like entry level pm and uh, intermediate second thing is like uh, work collaboratively this goes without saying but like uh when you are working with design do your brainstorming as well like you can bring like okay i have i have i brought these from different uh, apps that i have seen or companies or products that i have seen bring data when you are working with design uh, like tell them like why this problem is important like how many users are interacting with that specific page how much impact we can have these things actually make them motivated to uh, like design and work with you because otherwise like they do not know the impact of the work that they are going to do so saying that up front and being open to ideas like helps you a lot builds a lot of rapport again and same thing goes with sales customer service like so what i'm trying to say here is like uh, again building empathy and trying to understand their function it will make you a better pm like accompanying sales team to customer visits or listening to their calls would give you actually more uh, understanding of your own product uh, and there is no better way to know um, your customers or pain points of your customer than to go through customer tickets uh, so it, it should be absolutely on your agenda to regularly check customer tickets or regularly meet up with customer service team rep team to get uh, like crux of the month week like uh, what is the voice of uh, your customer basically and as you get senior like hopefully you are doing all the things that i have mentioned in, on the previous slide uh, but like it becomes more important that you uh, you are thinking big first of all like uh, you need to ask the right questions uh, or correct questions what i mean by that is like you know uh, where the problem is and what questions would lead you there uh, 
uh, you, you know, hopefully over time you build that kind of uh, rapport or understanding of the product market uh, and problems that you know like what kind of questions to ask to unearth the problems um, and then like as a senior PM, principal PM, like it's your duty to understand or come up with the opportunities that are impactful for your product. Like how do you take your product like 3x, 10x? Uh, it's, it's up to you. Like, uh, and uh, do not afraid to think big. Uh, what I mean by that is like we, and like uh, when I say we, like uh, I'm talking about me, like uh, I used to have a tendency of like delivering, showing more impact, but by delivering more. So if there would be a project that's going to take eight to nine months, like even though you can prototype, like you you could get into this circle of we have a small team, you want to be a, like agile, work quickly. And then uh, it what it ended up doing was like I was picking projects that I can deliver whole, uh, which was wrong. Uh, you can still think of bigger bets. Uh, of course, there are constraints and uh, constraint usually leads to innovation. So think big and then try to work backwards in chunks and see like how you can deliver that uh, thing. And then um, one, like two last things that I want to say, one is like be bold. Like uh, if you have seen in the last 50 years of technology, you don't need to go actually that back. Like look at last 12 or 20 years, companies that had bold ideas have, have done phenomenal well. And same thing goes with PMs like, uh, uh, one of the job that as a PM you have is alignment, but you do, do not need to agree with every everyone. Like you could have bold ideas, and if if you have enough qualitative, quantitative, or uh, like if your head is there, like you should definitely pursue those ideas and be bold in them uh, and show your stakeholders, company how uh, how you can pursue those ideas and have an impact on the product. One final piece is like write online and share your learnings. Uh, this piece actually brings your rapport, like because all, nowadays, like all your company, uh, like your manager, everybody is on uh, in your circle. Once you write online, it helps not only helps like crystallize your thinking, but it also helps people see as uh, you as an expert, uh, like in your org, in your past org. So. If, if you have had enough experiences, uh, you should share them as much as you can. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, one last thing I would say is like, take your work seriously, but not yourself. Uh, yeah, thanks. Hope this was helpful for some of you people. You can always follow me on LinkedIn uh, for some more advice on accelerating your PM career. Thank you.